everyone knows uh, we're Thunder fans. Andrew just gave some Thunder stats. And look, we, we really do try not to talk about the Thunder that much on this podcast. <laughs> it's true. We, we, we don't want to be seen as homers. We want it to be about the league. But sometimes it is unavoidable. And their recent run, which I mentioned earlier, included wins over the other top teams in the in the top of the Western Conference. It's become a moment for this team. You're hearing every NBA podcast do a segment on the Thunder. And mm-hmm. one of the big topics of conversation around this team right now is, are the Thunder a true contender? A lot of people answering this question with a resounding yes, and I get it. Statistically, it's difficult to look at this team and not conclude that they are a contender. Per cleaning the glass, we are talking about the fifth-ranked offense, sixth-ranked defense, third-best point differential. Half-court offense is number one in the league. Half-court defense is fourth in the league. They are the number one three-point shooting team in the league, number two mid-range team in the league. Every stat you find about this team is screaming at you that they are a contender, which frankly makes me very uncomfortable, Andrew. I, I don't handle success well. I'm bad at enjoying things. I was watching Poku play 30 minutes a night, what seemed like a few months ago, and now we're a contender? <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm there yet because of what the Thunder as a contender represent, because not only are they young, not only are they inexperienced, but we're talking about a team being a quote-unquote contender in their first playoffs. Yeah. Even in the face of all these amazing stats, it feels inconceivable that yeah. this team could really be a contender. Now, to put that youth and inexperience into context, Hispanos NBA, the number one site for looking up this stat, <laughs> lists the Thunder's average age as 23.7, which is only older than the Spurs and Pistons, who currently have a combined eight wins. For the playoff experience, here's a quick trivia question for our listeners, because I know you know the answer to this, Andrew. Who has the most career playoff games on the Thunder? I'll give you a few seconds to think of a name. The answer is Davis Bertans with 45 career playoff games. Davis is currently averaging seven and a half minutes per game in OKC. His role on the Thunder is sometimes coming in and shooting three threes as fast as he can, and then immediately going back and sitting on the bench. That is his current role. All of OKC's playoff experience and wisdom is largely tied up in that man. But okay, I say that the Thunder as a contender would be a historical anomaly, but is that actually true? Have there been any teams like OKC in the past that I could look to as an example, a proof of concept that a team this young, this inexperienced could actually be deserving of the contender label in their first playoffs? And so that's what I went looking for. I went back to the 1983-84 season which I picked because it was the first season the playoffs expanded to eight teams in each conference. I started by looking for any team that had home court in the playoffs after having not been in the playoffs for at least the previous two seasons. Mm. So in other words, a team that was in the lottery for multiple years and then exploded onto the scene in their first playoff season. The one exception to this that I made was the 89-90 Spurs. Okay, They did make the playoffs in the 87-88 season, which was only two seasons prior. But they did it with a 31 and 51 record. Wow. Do you remember when they announced the play in? You heard some people saying it was rewarding bad teams and that it was yeah. crazy to have 10 of 16 teams in a conference make the postseason. <laughs> Back in the 80s, eight teams made the playoffs when there were only 11 and 12 teams in each conference. Only seven of the 23 teams in the league missed the playoffs. And they call us the participation trophy generation. <laughs> anyway, this got me down to 26 teams. As an example, last year's Kings team qualifies as one of these teams. Last year's Cavs team also qualifies. Both had home court in the playoffs after having missed the playoffs for at least the two previous seasons. Then I looked at the average age of these 26 teams. I decided to calculate the average age of the top eight players in minutes played for each team, focusing on the main guys who are contributing. I also looked at each team's offensive and defensive efficiency numbers and whether they had an MVP candidate that season, since SGA being one seems like an important aspect of OKC's contender argument. Having that top tier level of player makes it easier to say they're a contender. And I defined MVP candidate as someone finishing in the top five of MVP voting. Yeah. And with that, I started to whittle the list down. Okay, first of all, three of the 26 teams actually won the title, and none of them have anything in common with OKC. It was the Bubble Lakers, the oldest team on this list, Mm -hmm. the 2022 Warriors, another old team who really shouldn't have made this list but did somehow miss the playoffs two seasons in a row, and the 2008 Celtics, another old team with experienced vets. 
Mm -hmm. The only older team that I thought shared some similarities with this OKC team was the 08 Hornets. Chris Paul was 22, his third season in the league. He finished yeah. second in MVP voting. Tyson yeah. Chandler was 25. David West was 27. They won 56 games. And similar to OKC, great three-point shooting team, not an amazing rebounding team, didn't turn the ball over, and top 10 in both offense and defense. They ended up losing in the second round in that seven-game series to the Spurs, a great series. Average age was 28.6, though, so not a perfect match. The teams that made the finals without winning at all were all older as well, with an average age of at least 26 and a half. That was the 2002 Nets, the 2015 Cavs, which was LeBron's first return season, and the 2021 Suns. Now, the 21 Suns are an interesting comp for OKC. Obviously, Chris Paul's age brings up the average, but yeah. the core outside of him was Booker, who was fourth in MVP voting that year, Bridges and Cam Johnson, who were all 24, and Ayton, who was 22. And similar to the 08 Hornets and probably every Chris Paul team and this year's Thunder, another good three-point shooting team that was below average in rebounding, didn't turn the ball over, and were top 10 in offense and defense. Lost in the finals to the Bucks. Had a ton more playoff experience simply because of CP3, but otherwise not a bad comp. Mm -hmm. Looking at some of the younger teams on this list, there's some fun ones. Now, the, uh, the Thunder of all these teams are still the youngest team on this list. But the second youngest team with an average age of 23.9 was the 05 Bulls, the first Bulls team to make it to the playoffs post-Jordan, won 47 games and lost in the first round as the four seed. Another really fun team that I personally loved was the 09 Blazers, who won 54 games, had an average age of 24, had guys like Brandon Roy, LaMarcus yeah. Aldridge, Nick Batum, Greg Oden, Rudy Fernandez, Travis Outlaw, Martel Webster, 25-year-old Channing Fry. Can you remember when Channing Fry was 25? Just an overwhelming number of young players who you could get excited about. I distinctly remember talking myself into Travis Outlaw right around this time. Did you know his nickname is Mr. Fourth Quarter? Did you know that? Travis I Outlaw. I, I, I remember hearing that, but that, that seems improbable that that would be his actual nickname. That Blazers roster was not too dissimilar to the Thunder's current roster makeup with young guys up and down the nightly rotation. Yeah. So if you're looking purely at roster construction, I think the 09 Blazers are the best comp on this list. It's easy to forget now, but that team was loaded with yeah. young talent. Brandon Roy was an all-star. Aldridge was a soon-to-be all-star. Odin played 61 games that season. That was his second season. Pick, now, we all yeah. know what happened, how injuries kind of derailed everything. But that roster was stacked with 24 and under talent. And winning 54 games in their first trip to the playoffs is still a massive achievement. They lost in the first round to the Rockets in six. So good comp, but not if you want to believe in OKC as a contender. Mm -hmm. Another team I'll mention, which I think is a decent comp, though again, not necessarily a tr as a true contender, the 2019 Nuggets. Average age of 25.3, not too old. Jokic was fourth in MVP voting that season. Their playoff rotation featured big minutes from Jokic, 21-year-old Jamal Murray, Gary Harris, Malik Beasley, Monty Morris, all who were 24 under. Now, they did have 33-year-old Paul Millsap. He did bring their average up, but pretty young otherwise. Top 10 in offense and defense. They end up losing in the second round to Portland in seven. That was the year that Portland went to the conference finals. The final team I'll mention, and arguably the best comp, if you really want to believe in this Thunder team, is a team not on the list because it was a team from the 1970s. The 1977 Portland Trailblazers. Average age, 24.8 which is incredibly low for any team, but especially a team in the 70s when yeah. guys were coming into the league much older. Yeah, Their top four in minutes played were all 24 under, led by All-Stars Maurice Lucas and Bill Walton, who was second in MVP voting that season. In their first playoff appearance, not their first playoff appearance in a couple of years, literally the franchise's first playoff appearance, the Blazers won the title, beating the Sixers in six games. Now, you can't really compare the two teams stylistically. They didn't even have a three-point line. Although, yeah. I will say that that 77 Blazers team is often talked about as you know an example of unselfish basketball, which, sure. which you hear that a lot about the Thunder as well. But age-wise, the 77 Blazers are the best argument for a first-time playoff team being a true contender. So, if you're buying into the Thunder as a contender, I think the 21 Suns and the 77 Blazers are the teams you want to hold on to, the teams that should give you some hope. No team is going to be a perfect comp, but in terms of having a young MVP candidate with a young surrounding core that was good on both ends, 
those are the two teams that stand out. So while OKC actually winning would still definitely be a once in a league event, because again, they're the youngest team of all the ones I mentioned. Maybe it's not quite as far fetched as I had once assumed, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. It, except for like you have to go back like 50 years. <laughs> You do have to go back 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> when they, that crazy. When they okay. didn't have a three-point line, <laughs> there were just a couple teams in the league. Whatever. Uh, Isn't that, a, that is amazing, though, about the Blazers. That yeah, having an average age, just having an average age of 24.8 in the 70s and then winning the championship that'd be almost with that like young of a roster. I mean that it must have been impossible to have that many and, young guys on a team. And if 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 you're interested in that team. Go read Breaks of the Game, an amazing book. There was about, I think, the third season after that season when things started falling apart. They were barely making the playoffs at that point, um, largely due to injuries to Bill Walton. But there was a ton of stuff going on with that team. It's an incredible book if you haven't read it. A classic in the genre. 